I was there when there was an incident in the store when a man came in, picked up a knife in the, the kitchen department and decided to slash all the women in the store. So no. I, I was on my way into the store as it was happening um, and he, the, the, he started on my counter and then that I swapped the shift with the girl who was wants to be on night or was from the early shift, I would have been the first victim. Um, you know, thankfully I, I missed out on all of that. But that changes your approach to go into yeah, it. Put the whole of fear. But you know, again, lots of my team were on Valium after it. It was really distressing. And you saw the best and the worst in people. Welcome to Push To Be More with me, your host, Matt Edmondson. This is a show that talks about the stuff that makes life work. And to help us do just that, I'm chatting with the very beautiful Jane Moore from More Media today about where she has had to push through, uh, what she does to recharge your batteries, and, uh, well, what she's doing to be more, which is ironic given her name. Now the uh, show notes and transcript from my conversation with Jane will be available on our website, pushtobemore.com. Uh, also, whilst you're there on our website, you can sign up for our newsletter and each week we will email you the links and the notes from the show all to magically uh, direct to your inbox totally for free. So make sure you do sign up for that. Now, this episode is brought to you by Orion Media, which helps entrepreneurs and business leaders set up and run their own successful podcast. And you know what? I have found running my own podcast to be super, super rewarding. It opens doors to amazing people, just like Jack, like nothing I have ever seen. I've built networks, made friends, had a platform to champion my customers, my team, my suppliers. And I think just about every entrepreneur and business leader should have their own podcast, uh, just because of the huge impact it's had on my uh, business. Now, of course, that all sounds great in theory, uh, but in reality, there is the whole problem of setting up distribution, getting the tech right, knowing what the right podcast strategy is, and the list goes on. And uh, Jane, you know as well as I, I'm like you, I love to talk to people, right? Uh, but not all that other stuff. So Orion Media takes it all off my plate. I do what I'm good at and they brilliantly take care of the rest. So if you're wondering if podcasting is a good marketing strategy for your business, do connect with them at orionmedia.com. That's A-U-R-I-O-N media.com. Uh, and we will of course link to them in the podcast show notes, which no doubt you have got on subscription. Now, before I read today's bio uh, and we get into Jane's conversation, uh, I just want to give a huge shout out to uh, Jan Carlisle, who, I don't know if you remember Jane, she was the beautiful lady that connected us uh, years ago. Uh, and Jan is great at the whole, the whole uh, event. Yeah, we love Jan. Uh, the whole events thing. Uh, and if you want to connect with Jan, know more about it, just head to her website, autumnlive.co.uk, especially if you're looking out for events. She's brilliant at those kind of things. Now, Jane Moore is the founder and chief executive of Jane Moore Media Group. It is a successful, or she is a successful award-winning entrepreneur and business leader. Jane established Moore Media in 2011 and has developed it from a traditional public relations consultancy into a full multimedia communications agency. And this has equipped her to deliver the full breadth of PR, social media, and branding needs of clients in the digital age. During lockdown 2020, Jane developed I Am More to be a government gateway for the Kickstart scheme, successfully placing almost 300 uh, young people into employment. In addition to this, Jane launched My Odd Job Guys, a handy person service, working to place X-Forces and blue light personnel uh, into work and generating work placements for young people who have been affected by unemployment and homelessness. She is passionate about ensuring that challenging topics are communicated effectively. As a former magazine editor, she has uh, an expert, rep expert in reputation management and crisis management. Jane has a reputation for getting things done. Uh, she gives her time to lead a number of organizations outside of 
work. She is uh, on board level and vice chair of St. George's Hall, which was in the recent Batman movie. Just want to point that out. Uh, and Jane, no doubt that was all down to you. So uh, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Thanks for joining me on the podcast. I'm super excited, Jane. I'm not going to lie about this conversation. Oh, it's lovely to be here, Matt. And uh, I can't take credit for the Batman to the cool film office. Uh, but there's lots of other things I can take credit for, but I don't. That <laughs> my client, I know where all the bodies are buried, Matt. Uh, I know all the secrets of everybody. <laughs> uh, and is, it's my job to make my clients look good, not myself. So, well, uh, yeah, and therefore it's my job to make you look good. So uh, uh, I'm just going to give you credit for Batman. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Peaky Blinders and uh, the, uh, the Beautiful Beasts. Uh, the Wizarding World of Beautiful Beasts and all that sort of Harry Potter stuff is in there as well. So the, it's really wonderful you see St George's Hall, Great Hall, featured in these amazing uh, productions. And it's a place I'm really proud of. Yeah. I was first to get married in the building in 2008 and in the license for first time for weddings. Uh, so I'm really proud. It, it feels like a, um, I shouldn't say it feels like an extension of home, but it does. I feel very at home now, it's beautiful. Yeah. Um, my home is not a bit like St George's Hall, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Make a hell of I a house. I, I keep it very real, I live in Kenny. Live in Kenny. Uh, for those outside of Liverpool, that's Kensington, uh, which is um, uh, not Kensington, London, Kensington, Liverpool. Well, uh, when I first came home to Liverpool, of course, all my friends in London, when I said I bought a five bedroom, three story townhouse in Kensington, they all thought I'd still be coming for lots of money <laughs> in Liverpool. And it's, uh, it's not the kind of price you imagine. No, it isn't. It's uh, it is it is slightly different, uh, Kensington, but still a beautiful part of the world. Uh, certainly yeah, parts yeah, of it, it uh, Kensington. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, actually, the, the community there is wonderful. I yeah. do feel really blessed by my neighbourhood because it is a really traditional neighbourhood. Um, my my neighbours bring my wheelie bins in for me, and they collect parcels. They put that. You know, we had a, an incident this weekend, and one of the neighbours rang us at five in the morning to say they'd seen something happen in our driveway. And you kept us very much aware of it. Well, well, it's interesting, isn't it? Were you, were you, are you born and bred Kensington, or have you? Yeah, no, I was born in Needham Road, just off Holt Road, and then we moved out to, uh, in those days, what was the, the known as the, the, the Green Belt land of Norris Green, <laughs> which when you look now, how Norris Green's changed. Um, it's, uh, you know, I was seen as then the posh kid. We lived in Norris Green because we had parks and trees and mm. we grew rhubarb in the garden. Uh, whereas now, um, being back in Kensington, I do feel very much at the heart of my family and my community. Um, and it's great. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. It's um, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? The whole thing with Liverpool that the amount of people that that are, are born here and they stay within a sort of a. We had Jen on the podcast, and she was the same way. She sort of not really moved out of the sort of the five six square mile area in which she sort of grew up in. Yeah. Uh, and and all the family is still there. I called Jan Jan Friday because when we first launched, obviously we were you know, running very fast. And Jan used to come in every Friday and freelance for me uh, as Jan Friday, and she'd just do all the admin and kind of keep me on track and get me organised. I've got a real affection for Jan. Ah, uh, Jan's and, lush. I love his Simon as well, husband. Yeah, yeah, Jan and Simon are great, and um, I've known Jan for. A very long time. I probably want to say nearly 30 years. It's got to be maybe slightly, yeah, it's got to be about 30 years now I've known that that young lady since uni days. So, yeah, um, yeah, she's incredible. yeah great, I'm really great. I really what they're doing down in uh, the TEDx Winchester. They're doing some great stuff. Yeah, they are doing the TEDx Winchester stuff, isn't it? Which is great. And um, yeah, just great at whole events thing, like we said uh, yeah. in the shout out. Yeah. So, so. Jane, let's talk about your good self a little bit. Um, so okay. you, you've you got more media. You've got this company up and running um, with the help of Jan Friday and a whole bunch of other people yeah. uh, over the years. Jan Richards, yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, so you've got this company. You've got your, your house in Kensington. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which was, yeah, Kensington Gardens. Yes, yeah, Kensington Gardens. I say, it's lovely. Um I should Has... just laugh though. I, ha I have actually got the only garden in the street because the house in between mine and my neighbours was bombed during the war. Right. So we, have got the, we have got the garden. Okay. 
That's fascinating. Uh, and so, and, and it was never built. The, the, the gap was never no, filled no, in. The land was split between the two houses. Um, wow. But we find all kinds of mad things in there. We found a Morris Minor in the car, <laughs> in the garage, in the car, in the middle of the garden when we did it. Anyway, we could talk for hours, I thought we were. Oh, jeez, that's Yeah, for those of you who don't know, the Morris Minor is a car. It's an old car from the sort of oh, 60s, 70s. Oh, feel really old. It's a, but it's my dad had a Morris Minor, and he still waxed lyrical about that car. It's like the best car he's ever owned. Do you know what I mean? And, and, um, yeah. and you do see them occasionally. Stunning, stunning cars. So you've grown up in Liverpool. Have you yeah. always sort of done the PR type thing? Yeah. Is that sort of your, your route to market? No, I started my very early career as with you know, admin and office and a bit of retail stuff. Um, and then uh, I then decided to my family, all, a lot of my brothers and sisters moved to London because in the late 80s there wasn't really an awful lot going on here. So I got on my bike, literally, on the, on the, on the train down to London to sleep on my brother's sofa in Wimbledon. Uh, my sister at the time worked for a cosmetics company called Lancome. And she got me an interview saying, oh, yeah. why are you down here? And seeing as you might all see if you can get some work. And I was offered a job with a Tony Lake cast in Harrods, uh, which you know, sounds very glamorous. But I was um, a cheeky scouser who uh, was constantly being told off by my boss. And um, but it taught me so much about people. Mm. You know, and, and the people who came into the store, you had everything from tourists who'd come in just wanting to buy a lipstick because they wanted to have a Harrods carry bag, food to the likes of Princess Diana and Joan Collins and you know, the legends of the time, like Luther Bancroft. Oh, wow. And, you know, the, uh, Edward Woodward used to come in every Saturday morning to buy things. Oh, you wow. Know, just these legends of our lifetime that you'd seen yeah. on TV growing up. But you had to learn how to conduct yourself and how to communicate at that level with people mm. who, you know, we all look up to. But... Um, it was a real sharp learning curve for me. Um, and then very quickly I was headhunted and ended up with Harvey Nichols uh, with a company called Lancaster. And I was really ambitious yeah. and always pushing for the next kind of promotion or the next thing. Um, and the only store that was within the kind of category A stores where there was a management position was in Birmingham. And at the time I'd been dating my boyfriend, who's now my husband, I met from the shippers in Port in Liverpool. He was from Birmingham, but he yeah. was in the forefront at the time with the, the Navy. Wow. So I thought, oh, yeah, I can go to Birmingham. So I just packed up my life belonging in a van and moved to the Midlands. But that put me in touch with a very different fucking base. Um, <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? Say, being really kind. And I was there when there was an incident in the store when a man came in, picked up a knife in the, the kitchen department and decided to slash all the women in the store. So no. I, I was on my way into the store as it was happening. Um, and he, the, the, he started on my counter. And then that I'd swapped the shift with the girl who was wants to be on night, or was from the early shift, I would have been the first victim. Um, so, you know, thankfully, I, I missed out on all of that. But that changes your approach to go into Yeah, I bet it does. Jeepers. It puts a of fear. But it, again, lots of my team were on Valium after it. It was really distressing. And you saw the best and the worst in people. Yeah. Yeah, there was the, 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 the thrill seekers who wanted to see the incident and the crime scene. Because um, the store opened up an hour later. You know, once we cleaned up and got rid of all the blood, then the store opened. It was kind of a business as usual kind of approach. And then that night, that afternoon, this man from the floor of the flower market came in and all the guys brought flowers into the girls. And then the flowers started to arrive for days after that. And the outpouring of support was incredible. Wow. Of course, that made me want to change jobs. Yeah, I bet. Uh, so I changed to a different company in a different uniform in the same department. Wow. Um, but that then put me in touch with it was a company called Sicily. And I met Karen Brady, who became a really regular client of mine. Um, and she used to have to go and do photo shoots for her. And I'll never forget, she said something to me on a shoot one day that really kind of struck a chord with me. And she said, why are you doing this? Because she could see that I had the potential to do more. We were yeah. the same age, thereabouts. Yeah. And, um, 
and basically she'd seen my potential uh, in that I didn't have that understanding of my my potential at the time. Uh, in detail, you are challenged to be the best in the business, but actually there's not really anywhere for you to go. Yeah. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's not always respected when you've done retail. Yeah. So when I got, when I eventually got out of retail, I, I'd kind of taken Karen's little voice in my head and she told me how she got started selling advertising to business to business. And, and I got a job for a company called Kemp's Publishing where I sold advertising for the Chamber of Commerce directories. I think it was either that or Yellow Pages at the time with a few <laughs> days. This predates Google, by the way. Um, so I, I learned how to do business to business yeah. through that, that job. And then I launched um, with a guy I worked and I launched a consumer magazine called Boutique, which is a lifestyle magazine for the Midlands. Mm. And that's really where I learned how to write and how to be creative and you know, create adverts for people and, and do marketing campaigns for people. We did large scale events across the Birmingham. We did launch events. All mm. for our advertisers is added value. Um, and like all first businesses and partnerships, it all went horribly wrong. And um, you know, we, we kind of crashed and burned in September the 11th, 2000, I'll never forget it, when the administrators moved in. And at the time, I was sponsored by Smart Car. You know, I had to free no car. Way. I had to, you know, Ted Baker used to dress me for events and all kinds of crazy deals and stuff. Um, but that was, they were where I really learned my negotiation skills and my people mm. skills. But it all came through you know, good old fashioned retail corner shop values of customer care and wow. making sure a few customers. Um, and then I came home to Liverpool. Um, kind of a little bit, you know, in, in recovery, you know, you know, running your yeah. own business into the wall is not easy. Mm. Um, and it was a really interesting time in the world when. September the 11th had happened. Yeah. Um, so I think the world changed. So I came home to regroup. Yeah. I then, I then got a job for Restaurant Magazine as a national property editor, traveling all over the country, meeting developers and planners yeah. and, you know, A3 commercial operators like you know, Simon Costa, the Yo Sushi, and interviewing these amazing characters. And it just got me back on to where I should be. Yeah. Um, and after a short stint in radio, where I kind of understood the medium of radio a bit more, mm. I, um, uh, I, I got a job running a, a small local radio station in Prescott called, it was called KCI, we launched it, The Rocket. And the first day I started, I lost my voice. <laughs> wow. You know? But then that lasted for 12 weeks, which eventually led to a cancer diagnosis. Oh. So I had to, my voice is a bit gravelly. I've got I had a I've got a paralysed larynx now still from those times in 2005 when I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Thankfully, oh. you know, treated curatively, and mm. thank God for Professor Pettit and the team over at the Royal Liverpool Hospital. Uh, you know, I've gone on to now uh, have this is now my second agency in the city. Um, I, I launched somewhere else with business partners. Uh, when I was still bald, and then wow. you know, kind of exited that in 2011 to on my own. And I think the lessons along the way, though, is that I never had the confidence to do it on my own. Really? So I didn't think I had the confidence on my own, yeah. Mm. I always felt I needed other people with me. Right. And I think that's part of being the youngest of a family of six. You know, as the baby, you don't ever feel like you've grown up enough. Mm. And that was the, the whole thing with Karen Brady, identifying that we're the same age. She was the yeah. MD of a football club and I was just and you know, not just I was a camp manager of managing twelve staff, but yeah. in a department store that really wasn't entrepreneurial enough mm. for me and my ambition. Um and that's why now I think I pay it forward so much. I see young people who are so talented mm. who don't believe in themselves or right. sometimes you I recognise other people and I kind of pick it out and say, you know, why are you doing this? I do for other people what Karen very did to me all those years ago. That's really interesting. So that, so that, okay. So that, that need then to have people around you and that support, that mentoring, I suppose, um, is what drives you now with helping the, all the forward, young yeah. people that you're you're paying it for. I love that phrase, pay it forward. That's such a great well, phrase, I think, isn't it? I think you know, with my previous agency, we were 
very much we grew from a very small startup mm. very rapidly because we used graduates who were volunteering for us. Um, so I've just got a building site outside. <laughs> it up by Jenny Mafia. You know, if you start even singing, let me know. Um, <laughs> never ending, the, the clad in the place outside. Anyway, um, that kind of, you know, starting small and I'm working with volunteers Mm. who were graduates to, to support our growth always felt to me a little bit fundamentally off you know okay. i when i was 20 i couldn't have afforded to go to work for free mm. and i think in the marketing creative industries all too often we rely on volunteers right. work experience them, and it's a bit of a you know, a bit of a, a trade in in you know they need the experience we need the skills so actually if we need the skills we should pay for them yeah. I've only ever done, you know, a couple of weeks of experience if, if that's what someone really wants. Because if, if I need them to be able to deliver on my projects, yeah. then I need to pay them. Yeah. Um, and I think, I look back and think, as a kid, I could never have volunteered. Yeah. In my family situation, my dad died when I was two, with my mum with six kids. I would never have got into the industry right. had I had to volunteer. Yeah. So, that's why the Kickstart scheme was so important to me. You know, and I'm really proud that of those kids replaced 80% of the same full time employment. Fantastic. And we keep in touch with them. You know, yeah. And we keep, um, we, we're just about to start delivering some training um, through growth platform in digital marketing. And the people we've placed are now being given the opportunity to go on the training to get improved conditions at work. Yeah. So it's like, you know, helping them skill up. Yeah. to operate the best practice like we do to then give them great opportunities to grow their careers and that's really important to me um you know and the, the whole my old job guys thing is my husband's ex-military and yeah. i've seen how he struggled in city street yeah so you know he's very lucky to have my network around him mm. he's still a brummy who's outside of his you know, network that he's grown up in and in the Navy, they are a very transient network. Yeah. They'll see his mates in London or in Newcastle, but his mates in the Navy are not here. So we've had to then build a support system around these guys who come to us, who sometimes have got issues, you know. Yeah. Um, there was a young man who lived with homelessness, and he came in as a Kickstarter. But the wraparound support we gave him to get him back on track, and he's now... You know, working full time in the Home and Bargains warehouse. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, you know, but the experience because he's got that experience of yeah. having done time with with my old job guys. Um, it doesn't always work out for the best. You can't help everybody, but you give them those journeys. Yeah, and you give them the to grow and learn, and that's all you can do. I love it. I love the fact that you, because a lot of people, they try these things, Jane, right? Uh, I mean, we've got some people which were placed with Kickstarter, a brilliant scheme. And, um, but a lot of people try these things. It doesn't work out the first time they try it. And so therefore don't do it again and just tell everybody it just doesn't work. Right. Whereas I, I listening to you talk, um, obviously you've, you've persevered with these things and actually are a driving force behind some of them. Uh, and, and obviously it's a real passion for you, like a, a real thing you, you want to see, uh, you mm. know, with, with young people, which is great. So. Well, I'm I, a mum, Matt. You're a mum. I've got a 14 year old daughter. Yeah. Um, and for me, I'm seeing the workplace she's going to go into and seeing her own social anxiety that's left behind by kickstart. And even with all of my you know, skills, abilities and networks, I mm. see that becoming an issue for her as she goes in towards being ready for the world of work. So it's more about and a lot of the, there's lots of other women I work with in the city and we're developing projects together because and we come at it from that parental point of view mm. and that nurturing side of things saying, you know, we see the problem. I'm a solution builder, you know, so I can see the solution mm. for the problem, but I've not always got the finance and the, you know, the capacity to be able to drive on my own. And I'm having to learn how to work within the system, mm. which is set up to make you fail. It's set up um, to be so complex mm. that actually, you know, 
you can't always achieve what you head out to do. Kickstarter's a prime example of that. Brilliant scheme. We had 500 jobs to fill. However, the scheme was so constrained that mm. we couldn't fill all of them. We had a thousand applicants yeah. because the, the controls that they put in place were such that we couldn't place all the kids. Mm. Young people, I should say, they're not all kids, are they? But no. when you're my age, when you're older than me, you do see them all as kids. <laughs> um, you're as old as me. We've got, we've got Caitlin here, who's a prime example of a success story. You know, she's on a trajectory for her career now. Mm. Started with Kickstarters and has gone on to do amazing things with her clients who adore working with her. And she'd really struggled to get into work. Mm. You know, graduate who came into back to Liverpool during the pandemic, we came back to her home city um, and just couldn't get a job. And I'm yeah. so grateful that she came to us. Yeah, that's interesting. Do you think then it's incumbent upon business leaders, entrepreneurs to to look out for the um i don't want to i don't know what the phrase i'm looking for is the sort of a vulnerable people group so the young people for example who aren't getting the breaks who aren't getting the chances and going actually no i need to create space in my organization that actually helps kickstart um that helps uh people that ordinarily yes, maybe would yeah. be overlooked i think we've all got a responsibility but the challenge is when you have an hr function or a recruitment need of course, you want to you want the best mm. in your in your opportunity to employ someone, but that then leads to a lack of diversity, lack of inclusion. Um, and I was with somebody last week who part of the process they put in place is to do blind CVs. Mm. You know, so there's no location, there's no you know, there's no photographs, there's no names, mm. and then you can take people on. But a CV doesn't really work anymore. Mm. Mm. You know, kids, you know, kids, young people. Um, the way we recruit is by getting them to do a, a, you know, a digital post, whether it's a video yeah. or an animation. We ask them to express who they are to us, mm. not in a CV. Mm. And a CV can tell you so much. A CV could have been written by somebody else for them. And often the first thing I say to anyone applying for a job is, yeah, give me a call. Mm. Always say yes, call me. Because I, in my world, you need to have to pick up the phone and speak to me, or yeah. speak to a journalist, or speak to you know, an influencer, or speak to somebody yeah. to make an influence of them, mm. to get them to do what you need our clients to achieve. So if you only communicate by email or text, you're not going to achieve that. Mm. And I'm really shocked at how few calls actually come through. Yeah. They're not, they're not right for our environment, if that's the case. Mm. So we start with our interview process to be a bit more creative. Mm. Um, and to say, you know, we have one guy who gave us an amazing animation um, and we've had other people do great videos and really, they can express themselves through a TikTok dance for them. Yeah, yeah. That shows them who they are. Yeah. And the who they are is more important to me than how they've achieved in an exam. Yeah, yeah. You know, if, I, if you look at my academic achievements, I fell out of love with education at you know, six weeks into sixth form. Because and I, I shouldn't tell my clients Shakespeare North, it was Shakespeare that did it for me. I was like, oh, I'm out of here. Yeah. Um, but also that I needed to go into the world of work with my family needed income. Mm. So, you know, that is still happening today. And how are we supporting those young people? For me, it doesn't matter whether you've got a degree or a baggage and attitude. You mm. know, if you've got the right attitude, I can train the rest. Yeah. No, exactly, exactly. I love that. I, I, I love that. It's um, where we've done very similar things in the past where you look at actually, I'm not too much. A, I'm not too concerned about necessarily how skilled you are. I want to look at how teachable and how trainable you are in a particular mm. area. Um, and how and, you put me down and get through to me. Yeah. And if you can get it through and speak to me. And I always say, ring me because my mobile number's on LinkedIn. You know, yeah. anyone can ring me. Yeah. So it drives me mad. Well, I, I, I don't know what it is. I, I, I have the same thing at work in the past where I've like, I've, I've said to people, just give them a, a call in the office. Just get on the phone and give them a call. But it's like I've asked them to plat sand. Uh, do you know what I mean? You almost feel like you have to show them how the phone works. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's a generational. I, th I it do is. think it is a generational is. thing, I think. Anyone and under the age of 35. Started, that's when we started recruiting through video. Yeah. You know, submit a video to this email address. Um, 
and it's amazing you can actually see the person you can see them shaking and that's fine we accept that people get nervous but the fact they push themselves over yeah. the edge they've you know they've gone over the brink and we can yeah. do the rest yeah no it's true we had people <laughs> fill out really yeah we had people fill out um, an application form and i used to ask them to draw uh, a the, their superhero costume has nothing to do with the job, right? But it, it, it yeah, you do. Uh, what books do you read? Was another question that we asked on the application yeah. form. And if you didn't yeah, fill yeah. out the application form, we weren't interested. Uh, we didn't yeah. care how good you were, because you weren't yeah. the right kind of person from a cultural fit. Right? In schools, nobody teaches young people this. Mm. You know, so I started going to talk in schools uh, about my story, and uh, I was really, really. In my thoughts, I thought I'd been really motivational, and the young girl directly in front of me fell asleep. <laughs> I can't get into all of them, but you know, I could see the lights went on with one or two, and I followed up with office for work experience with them. Wow. Because actually, it's that, that light inside someone that you look yeah. for. Yeah. Um, and you know, hopefully, we'll end up getting her in for work experience when she starts next year doing that uh, part of Fantastic. But I think Fantastic. You know, Get back to your point about me, well, it's hard when you're in an SME to take that responsibility on, mm. which is why I think the Kickstart scheme was brilliant for enabling entrepreneurs to be philanthropic. Yeah, it was. Yep. You know, you got a six month salary paid, uh, all their costs were paid, mm -hmm. and you could really then invest in giving that to yep. the young person that experience. And there was you know, the people who came in here, one guy, wouldn't make eye contact, couldn't speak. You know, his uh, family all had you know, different neurodiverse issues like autism and ADHD. Mm. And while he wasn't diagnosed, you could see there was a trait within yeah. that for him. And having done the work we've done with ADHD Foundation, we, we wanted to give him the opportunity. Um, by the end of the six months, he was a different guy. Fantastic. You know, he went until we placed him somewhere else and we finished here um, and he's thriving now. And that's where. Mm. You know, you can't always fix everyone, but if you can give them that opportunity yeah. to shine and show them how the world of work works, yeah. but actually, as an SME, you can't always afford to do it. Mm. Well, so Jane, I mean, you're doing this great work with um, young people and uh, you've got to drive there, which is great. You've overcome cancer, uh, you know, twice, <laughs> not just I once, but twice. One. Since we spoke last, I've had breast cancer. Um, oh. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> uh, but it's dealt with, it's done, and it's dusted, and it's gone. So um, no more treatment needed. I get to keep my hair this time. Which is oh, really fantastic. Cool. fantastic. fantastic. My hair gets the right length yeah. as we start talking about me. But it's all done. Um, and I'm, again, eternally grateful to the Royal Hospital for the care they give me over the years. Mm. They keep telling me I'm an interesting case. Yeah. <laughs> I think they can be interesting. Not yeah, I just want to be normal. Boring, yeah. Yeah, boring. Yeah. A bit boring is fine. Oh, yeah. lovely. Yeah. But I do get backtracked to resource every time I go in, which is always lovely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's got to have its perks. So you've 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 survived cancer twice, plus the breast cancer. Um, you you seem to have a zest for life. Um, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, and actually, you, you tend to notice people that this that have gone through real serious medical issues, like yourself with the mm -hmm. cancer. There's a real zest for life there, real passion for helping um, young people and stuff like that. So I'm curious, Jane, what do you do to stay strong, to recharge your batteries? Because there's a lot of stuff going on in Jane Moore's life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do. I work with a coach. I have a lady called Denise Jones I work with. Um, we're at a point now where, you know, she knows me for the last 11 years. If I ever have an issue, uh, I'll pick up a phone and book an appointment with her. And we, uh, I let it all out to her, really. Um, I've got an amazing team around me who support me. My team did an intervention on me uh, in a few months ago. Okay. Uh, when I was obviously not having a good time in my head with what was going on with me personally. And they sent me home. Uh, and said, do you need a bit of time out? So Richard, Lizzie and Jen and Rachel literally rounded on me and said, can we take you for coffee? You need to go home. So, yeah, you, you see your um, 
coach, you see your life yeah. coach, um, you had an intervention from your team, which I just, I just love that. Your team just like, Jane, can we have a coffee? You need to go home, love. Um, okay. And so, that's, that's, that's actually quite it. And I did, and you know what, I think we all have to own that. Um, we all have personal lives and we all have stuff that goes on that impacts how we lead. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't being the best leader at the time, I was being a bit of a crouch. And then they were, you know, something I was shouting, I was really angry and, and obviously it was impacting because of of what was happening to me personally. Um, so I went home and I went to bed and had a good old cry uh, and then Denise put me back together again. But I had to deal with, with particularly with this recent breast cancer diagnosis, within that, you know, I'm of the age of the menopause and I hate we have to talk. It's great that we're talking about the menopause. Yeah, yeah. And, before I got at this point, it was always about, oh, God, don't talk about the menopause. <laughs> um, because it's a bit scary and no one really understands what goes on. Mm. And it is like having uh, an internal terrorist attack. Somebody else sits inside your head mm. and completely causes chaos. You know, my vision is worse than it was. My memory is far worse than it was. Uh, you know, your skin dries out and starts becoming mm. more wrinkly. You have to put more moisturiser on. There's loads of different elements of it, but also, you know, just the physical exhaustion. Yeah. You know, I could have gone to the sofas and slept some days. Mm. So I do think more needs to be understood about that part yeah. of life. Um, and it's great that men and women are talking about it in the workplace. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. So, but I've just managed to get my menopausal symptoms under control when the breast cancer diagnosis came, and I had to come off HRT. Oh. Um, it took me a year to get it because obviously since you know Davina raised the profile of, of the support that should Every be available, moment. Yeah, yeah. everyone's on it and GP has taken longer. And because I'm an interesting case, I had to have three or four layers of consultants approve it. Wow. So it was much more complicated for me. Um, I've had it for three months and I have to come off it. So cold turkey coming off. It was not pretty. No. Um, so I just took myself away, you know, I always remember there's a there was a meme I saw once on on social media. I don't know. I think it was a a, a phrase from uh, whether it was younger or whether it was you know one of those amazing philosophers, some philosophers who talked about that humans are are when they feel pain, it's growth, it's pain, mm. and in order to grow, you must feel the pain. But you know, a lobster. In order to grow, they have their shell on the outside. They have to get really uncomfortable in order to grow to the next size of shell. Yeah. But in our society, we medicate through pain, mm. emotional pain, so we don't ever really get the growth. Whereas a lobster will go under a stone for a bit, get really uncomfortable, and then break out of the shell. Yeah. And shine a new one. So that's kind of the method I take: is I go under a stone for a little bit, disappear, mm. and you know, then get my head on straight and come back you know, with a new do and a a new vibe, a new energy, because really, you know, we all have tough times. Yeah. And I, I cope with it in my own way mm. and control my environment really closely so that I'm not inflicting myself on everybody. Because that's when I was in pain, I was inflicting myself on my team. Mm. And that's not pretty, that's not fair anymore. So, no, um, no, but it's testament yeah. to your team. Would you like me uh, share? I do. Uh, beautiful. Uh, like I said at the start, you're a beautiful lady, Jane, and um, I, I still stand by that. And and still, actually, I, I'm uh, one of the inspiring people. You know, I, uh, given that all you've gone through, the level of inspiration uh, is great. And then just listening to you tell your story, um, you know, testament to you that your team, mm -hmm. you you've you've created a team that could tell you you need to go home, mm -hmm. right? I mean, credit yeah. to them, but credit to you for because not everybody yeah. has that. And so, yeah, really um, I'm really blessed by the people around me. I must be honest. Yeah, really I, it's 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 amazing, really, what you what you've got going on there. And so, um, it's really uh, interesting how lots of people try and poach them. At that stage, because we've got such a great team. Yeah, you know, people do come fishing. In my oh, I, I I bet I've got half their emails. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we are right. Yeah, about we we are. Um, we have a very collaborative approach in a team here. Mm. There's no hierarchy particularly. We have a leadership team, 
but actually everyone's voice is valued. Yeah. Um, you know, when we first started the team meeting, we still go around and outside. And um, it's really important to me that everyone's got a voice. Yeah. And no, they call me out, you know, I'm the first one to say, call bullshit if you see bullshit. You know, yeah. Let's not do that. Yeah. No, it's interesting. Uh, you make reference to everyone has a voice because we we when we talked about this before, and we're like, let's call the podcast "Finding My Voice," uh, which is obviously you know testament to you overcoming the cancer and still having yeah. the paralyzed larynx and, and yeah. falling silent. I'm the paralyzed diaphragm now, Matt. It's all falling apart. <laughs> um, but there's a really interesting news. I was at the Strawberry Field uh, Christmas Carol concert last weekend. Mm. Now I, the team, will go on karaoke nights or. Well, and I never sing. Um, but I was sitting behind Julia Bird, who's John Lennon's sister, and this amazing Strawberry Field brass band was on, and the kids were singing. And I got really carried away and just started singing. Oh, fantastic. School, school age Christmas carols. And I, the tears were just streaming. Yeah. You sing. Yeah. But you won't see me on a karaoke anytime soon. No, no, I would like to hear you sing Christmas carols, though, because that just sounds lovely. Uh, that sounds. Yeah, that beautiful. sounds. Uh, very um, restorative uh, and yeah, very healing, yeah, I would have thought. Very magical. Um, we're at that part of the show, Jane. Uh, where I, I do the hundred questions. Uh, so, are, are you ready for this? I need, I need like a, a piece of music for this, really. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the the premise of this, uh, if you're listening, is I have a bunch of cards in my hand. Jane is going to say stop, and wherever she says stop, I'm going to read that question, okay, and see what comes up. So go ahead. Stop. Stop there. Okay. Here's the question, Jane. Is it age appropriate, Matt? Uh, you'll have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to live more in your body or more in your head? Ooh. That's a really interesting one. I've been brought up by a proud Scouse mum who's always tried to make me own my own body. And I, you know, as a curvy girl, it's a, an interesting one um, to ask. Mm. But I think, I don't know how you can separate the two. It's quite a challenging question. Anyone who wants to spend an hour in my head, good luck to you. Because the nature of the, the person I am, I'm always looking for solutions. I'm always pushing. Mm. Mm. I could be able to be exhausting sometimes. Um, well, I don't know how you can separate the two. Is mind and body are connected? Yeah, I, I think it's a really it's, tricky it's, question. Think, well, it is. And actually, maybe I'd live in my spirit as well. Mm. Maybe I'll just choose spirit over both of them. So you, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, let's go with that one. Let's go with yeah. that one. Jane, that listen. Yeah, it was a hard one. Well, this one's slightly easier, right? As you know, okay. this show is sponsored by Orion Media, which specializes yeah. in helping good folks set up and run their own podcasts, right? So I'm curious, do you have a podcast yourself? No. So let's um, let's let's assume you do, right? Okay. I'm curious. Um if you could have anyone on your show, right? Uh, past, present, or future, someone that you'd really love to talk to who's had a big impact on your life, who would it be? Well, so can I have two? Yeah, have as many as you like, love. Yeah. Okay. It's well, your I'd show. Love to, I'd love to say, well, I have already thanked Karen Brady for the inspiration. That the, she was the, the catalyst for me to go forward. So I'd like to have Karen. I think she's a really inspiring leader. Um, as a woman in business, she for me embodies a kind of the, the she doesn't deal she doesn't lead with agenda. Yeah. She leads with the fact she's good in business. Yeah. And that for me is really important. And I, I model that I suppose in my own leadership style. Um but there's a there's a really good friend of mine, Alex Cousins, who when things are quite challenging and when uh people are behaving in less than a nice way, she says, Let's be more Michelle Obama. I'd love to meet Michelle Obama. Okay. That should be a great interview, I think. Um, oh, and who else would I want to interview? Somebody who I did get to meet, uh, but she had a, didn't have a hearing aid turned on when I was chatting to her, was Jane Russell. Okay. What an interesting life that lady's led. Mm. Um, 
and again as a pioneer in her age and her generation there's a lot we don't know about the work that she did mm. with young people um she kind of you know supported young people getting into into the industry and also into getting back on track with life so um and she's a, an interesting old broad as she described herself to me when she finally did turn here and aid on <laughs> rather than me um so they're three women that i'd love to sort of to have on my podcast and and we'd have to call it live birds wouldn't we you would have to call it live it's such a good name for your podcast <laughs> 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 and you could just literally go around all the women in Liverpool yeah. interviewing them on this. It'd just be amazing, all those absolutely scout moms, amazing. Yeah, all those scout moms were like warriors. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But um, but I think that that'd make quite an interesting mix. I think you know because you've got a bit of Hollywood glamour, mm. old school. You got you know current business leader, and then you've got come on, be more Michelle Obama. She's uh, she just has a dignity about her. I think there is so something far. about There's Michelle so Obama, isn't there, which is mm. extraordinary. Um, and I, I, you almost want her to run for president. Do you know what I mean? It's that yeah, kind of, um, yeah. And I get what you mean with Michelle, but I'd, yeah. I'd love to have them yeah. all on the show, uh, to be fair, and, yeah. and chat to them yeah, and talk yeah. to them. It's, um, it's brilliant. Jane, listen, uh, I'm aware of time. Uh, and as always, time gets away from us. Yeah. Thank you for coming on to the show. Genuinely love hearing your story, love hearing you talk with your uh, gravelly voice and just aware of, it just reminds me of, of, of all the stuff you've managed to overcome. So thank you for being lovely. Thank, thank you, you for being inspiring. Um, you're an I absolute legend. Say, Matt, I start my day a bit like Mariela Postra or the husky and kind of gravelly. But by the end of the day, I'm a bit more Marge Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean your hair goes up as well? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Or Marge's sisters, maybe. Oh, yeah, this <laughs> Oh, such a brilliant thing. Uh, and on that bombshell, um, how do people reach you if they want to get hold of you, whether, you know, you're Marge Simpson or not? Well, I'm on LinkedIn, Jane with a Y, more with an E. Uh, it's usually the most direct port call because it goes straight to my pocket and my phone. Um, or the website is janemoremedia.com or the website's about to be rebuilt so it's it's uh, a little out of date at the moment because we've moved on in a lot of what we're doing so yeah a lot of companies are doing that aren't they post covid because everyone's had to sort of pivot and redo things and Absolutely. the world's and changed actually, Matt, a lot I should also thank you when we were doing our pirouettes as i called them launching five new businesses during lockdown uh, you were a great support to me and gave me lots of inspiration so i'm really grateful for the time you gave me um, oh. e-commerce you know that you are. yeah well I, I don't know about that but no, no great it was great it was lovely to be with you guys actually and yeah. um, so fantastic we will of course link to Jane's LinkedIn profile uh, and of course if you do want to get a hold of her just give her a ring because why not yeah, right uh, yeah old school <laughs> see what happens kick, kick the doors in that's what yeah. I always say <laughs> <laughs> absolutely <laughs> do, it. do it do no, it's been brilliant what a great conversation uh thanks to jane for joining me today isn't she fantastic uh and a big shout out again to today's show sponsor orion media if you're wondering if podcasting is a good marketing strategy uh for your business whether it's called liver birds or scouse or whatever you want to call it uh do connect with them yeah at orionmedia.com that's a-u-r-i-o-n media.com we will of course link to them uh, on the uh, show notes as well, which, let's face it, you should have them come into your inbox if you've signed up to the newsletter. Now, be sure to follow Push To Be More uh, wherever you get your podcast from because we've got get more great conversations lined up and I don't want you to miss any of them. And in case no one has told you yet today, you are awesome. Yes, you are. Absolutely awesome. It's just a burden you've got to bear. Jane has to bear it. Uh, I have to bear it. You've got to bear it. It's just the way it is, right? So uh, let's just bear it with pride, as they say. Uh, Push to be more is produced by Orion Media. You can find our entire archive of episodes on your favorite podcast app. The team that makes this show possible is Sadaf Bainal, Josh Cashpole, Estella Robin, and Tim Johnson. Our theme music was written by Josh Edmondson. And as I mentioned, if you'd like to read the transcript or show notes, head over to the website, Push to be more.com where 
as I've also said, you can sign up for our weekly newsletter and get all of this good stuff direct to your inbox totally for free. That's it from me. That's it from Jane. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic week. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.